got a special guest in the house today. I'm going to let him go ahead and introduce himself. Hey, peace, peace, peace. It's Sneeze, man. Not Sneeze, man. I'm Sneeze, man. Thank <laughs> <laughs> you, guys. In my pants, smell like Benny Hanna. She want love, and I lied and told her that I got gotcha. you. She in love with drugs. I can't introduce her to my mama. I ain't trying to do it unless they tell me that they need it. Make my own like Master P before you catch me Gucci creeping. Ask me if I'm gonna be rich, and I say filthy, baby, peep it. I need VV for my glasses. When I'm shining, they gon' see it. Where my dollars? I don't want no nine to five. Why do we converse? I've been hustling off the internet. Feel like I'm pushing powders. I ain't scared of taking risks. Nah, bitch, I ain't no coward. Finna kill this shit with no trace. Talking on my face like I'm ghost face. No fake. Bitch, I need them bands like I'm cold play. Young cube, when I'm in the booth, feel like O'Shea. New script, but it ain't no pills in the screenplay. We at RVA Boombox, man. RVA Boombox, the place to be. If you're not there, you're probably square. You know what I'm saying? But it's okay, though, because we're going to bring you into the into the circle of joy that is RVA Boombox. You got a <laughs> um, show coming up, too, don't you, bro? Yes, sir, bro. July 21st, we here at RVA Boombox. We getting busy. It's me, my man Sean King, my mm -hmm. man A+. Plus. This is the first time we're ever doing... Uh, First time ever doing our own headliner at the crib. We've headlined out of state. We've done headline, like been the headliner for other people. But my man over here at the box has given us the platform and the opportunity to really like stand on it. Like, yeah, this is a sneeze show. You know what I mean? For, for the sure. first time. And, and I'm really excited about it. I got a good feeling. Let's start from the top, bro. Where you from, man? I'm from Richmond, Virginia, man. You know, grew up in... Uh, well, all over the place, really, but from like sixth grade on over there in the West End and with my grandma and them, and yeah, bro, it's the crib. <laughs> How was it growing up in Richmond, man? Um, It's cool, man. It's cool. I moved around a lot more when I was younger. Like, uh, I spent some time in Atlanta briefly. I was in Hopewell, um, living in like some random fucking place in the woods. I don't even remember <laughs> with my mom and her friends and shit, but uh. Once once I got kind of settled in um, and started getting older, you know what I'm saying? It was very cool because it's like we have elements of like a city. Oh, shit. But we also have, um, you know, it's, it's, it's chiller. It's more laid back right. than in New York. So I think it's a great spot for a kid because you can decide how much you want to experiment. You can decide how far out you want to go. Because the bus is right there. Jump on. Go wherever you want. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, it's not like a New York City where it's like, if you step out the house, you have to be in this giant fucking grid <laughs> system. You know what I mean? So it was dope for sure. You went out to Cali too, man. What made you want to go out to California? Um, I, I like going out there, man. We we had done our last show. Actually, speaking of doing headline in other places, man, that was the first headline show that I ever did was, was out there. Um... And uh, it was cool, man. It was cool. It was dope. Probably heading back soon. Um, shout out the homies out there. My man, Miko Mars. Shot the layover video when we were out there last time. And um, yeah, it's just a dope spot to go. You know, I, I don't know if I would move out there, but I definitely love to go out there for sure. What made you want to do music, man? Man, I don't know. I love this shit, bro. You know, <laughs> I just like, I love it. I like it a lot. I can't not do music you know i mean initially starting off my uh you know just hearing music around my mom big hip-hop fan you know everybody around me was for the most part my uncle he was rapping you know like all through my childhood and free hb he's about to be out september so guaranteed not this show but the next show he's on that bitch okay but um he actually kind of you know, we used to have this the closet studio and everything. Him and my uncle, uh, IQ, shouts out him too. Y'all follow him. He's here with us right now. You know what I'm saying? Outside. Mm -hmm. But uh, not in the building, but in our hearts. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so they kind of just got me interested in the idea of me being able to rap. And um, I just kept going. You know what I mean? At what age did you take it serious? Take it serious? Probably like 15 or 16. You know what I mean? I started doing shows around the city and like, oh my God, excuse me, that was trifling. 
sorry. Uh, you don't have to cut that because I'm a real person. Yeah. But I just want you to know that I'm sorry. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, yeah. I started doing shows around the city uh, around like 15 or 16, putting out music. Um, I think I put out my first tape when I was on my 16th birthday. Um, and uh, after that, the rest was history. You know what I mean? Just yeah. kept going. Who's some artists that motivated you to make music, man? Um, Damn. So many. My favorite artist in the world is Bobby Caldwell. Um, rest in peace and long live the GOAT. Yes, sir. Um, fucking right now, I'm listening to a lot of like Central C. Um, as far as like early on rappers and stuff that I really love. Um, you know, her logic, um, a lot of Kendrick, a lot of Nas. My mom used to have a bootleg Hip Hop Is Dead CD, and it only had like the first six tracks on that bitch because <laughs> it would start to scratch up after. And I remember when I had first moved in with my grandparents, my granddad used to be so pissed because I'd be playing it on my little radio that I had got from like fucking Dollar General or something yeah. like that, man, banging that shit out of the distorted speakers. Come in there. Turn that shit off, man. But um, yeah. A lot of people. A lot of people. I listen to a lot of different music, but those are probably a good idea of where I'm at now and where I've been. Yeah. Do you feel like Richmond get overlooked, man? Or you feel like we got our mark in here now? How I you mean, feel? No, I don't think we're overlooked, man. I, I think the reality of the situation is, you know, we've had some people that have, have made it to uh, breach that threshold from here. Mm-hmm. Before, maybe not as many as other places, but it is what it is. We've got people breaching the threshold right now. Shit, we breaching the threshold right now. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? So it's in, in platforms like you guys and and like other places too, like a RVA boombox. Right. You know what I mean? These things are going to continue to build up and continue to fester in a way that that's going to become eventually undeniable. Because we might not be the biggest city. But this shit is raw. Yeah. This shit is fire. And we're very eclectic, even though we're very small. So it's like there's so many different flavors of music. Look at me and like versus a uh, shout out FNF Chop, who, who's really breaching the threshold nah, right now. Really. You know what I mean? He and I don't sound anything alike. Or or my guy Rep, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? My man PGB Renegade. Mm-hmm. These are close home, my brothers in my inner circle, and we don't necessarily sound alike. So I think there's a lot of different opportunities that are just going to continue to to grow and become more prevalent that are going to make it impossible to overlook if anybody thought we were being overlooked. How'd you meet Rep, man? Shit, bro. It's a legendary story, man. I uh, When I was a kid, um, I used to go to the marketplace up the street from my house and like get rellos and shit, allegedly. <laughs> and my man would always look out for me. And I, I would, you know, I would go over there and rap in the store with my friends or like, you know, battle and stuff like that. Show him my videos once I started making stuff. Because I remember when I, sh- I went and showed him my, my video, he was like, well, shit, my guy rap has a studio mm-hmm. at the crib. He makes music too. And looking back, <laughs> for instance, if my daughter ever was to become an artist, hopefully not, um... But if she was ever to do that and and to just be like, all right, yeah, I'll ride with you when you get off work to the studio. (laughs) Hell no. Absolutely not. But, you know, my guy is a great dude. He's got a pure heart. You know what I'm saying? Shout out my man, Les, bro. Um, He he put me on to rep and we we had like a crazy hip hop moment that night, like ciphering back and forth, trying to decide... If we really Crazy. respected each other's pens or not, you know mm. what I mean? And like, needless to say, we did. And the rest was history. I was going over there. We called it uh, the sweatshop, Nottingham Palace, man. Fucking uh, over at Nottingham Green Apartments, man. We were just grinding it out, bro. I would be over there like every day walking from my grandma's house and then listen to the songs walking on the way home. Yeah. Who's some artists in the city that you're listening to right now, bro? Um, Definitely, you know, rap. My man, Renegade. Um, who else, man? There's definitely a lot of people, man. I really like um, my favorite, one of my favorite projects ever 
It's my guy K1 shit, Eternal. Mm -hmm. It came out a few years ago now, but it's still like one of my favorite projects, period. I, like regardless of whether we're talking about in the city or not, it's so good, bro. Y'all should check that shit out if you get a chance. Maybe come check it out with me after the show on uh, uh, July 21st. <laughs> First, yeah, me. man. You know what I'm saying? We yeah, Say RVA that bitch in the box. car and smoke a blunt. RVA boombox, baby. It's not a game. Are you signed or independent, bro? I am independent. In it to win it. Can't stop because we trying to get it. Tell us a positive <laughs> and a negative about being independent. Um, Well, I guess the obvious positive is I can do whatever I want. Mm-hmm. But then the negative is it's on me to do whatever I want. <laughs> <laughs> like it's it's always yeah. on you, but you know, you really have to be willing to just push through. But then again, at the same time, bro, like I am not one of these guys that's like anti label by any means. Mm -hmm. um, so you will sign? I would sign, perhaps, potentially. You know what I mean? The offers that we've got up to this point weren't necessarily the offers we wanted. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we just continue to rock out how we've been and just trying to do it bigger and better within our capability. And, you know, the big thing about the label is the money. Right. The machine <laughs> behind them, what, what they're able to put you in front of. But then it's also, you know, it's hard to to understand what it's like to truly be in that world unless you've really been immersed in that world. So I can't necessarily speak to a certain degree just because the furthest I've ever been in regards to labels is being in a meeting, shit, bro, I'll sign you right now. Here's a terrible deal. No thanks. <laughs> you know what I mean? And um, But, you know, as we grow and we build the leverage, that's the beauty of independence. You're capable of doing what you want and cultivating a, a, a point of, of leverage for yourself based on what you do as opposed to what they're going to ask you for. So, like, a lot of situations I've had where, um, we'll say an arbitrate, label people, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying, have, have reached out to me. A lot of times what happens is they say, bro, I fuck with you so much. You're so dope, but I need you to be similar to this that I already have a frame of reference for for success as far as a product because you're so different. I don't know if you're going to sell or not. Right. So they're like, with me, frankly, hey, bro, you rap. Be like these other white rappers built in fan base, you know, and and I don't knock them for that shit. If I was, mm -hmm. if I if I had millions of dollars on the line, I would want to know more than not know that this shit was gonna come back. So <laughs> it's just on on me and any artist that's hyper original and and never been seen the likes of before type shit to just really build your foundation up before you go into anything. Because if they don't know where to put you, there's gonna be nowhere to go but the shelf, you know, unless you're controlling your decisions and destiny. Bro, tell us the positive and the negative of being a white rapper. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, man. Um, I, I never looked at myself as a white rapper. I'm just a rapper who's white. Yeah. You know, I'm a white person. I don't know if you could tell. But, <laughs> but, <laughs> um, but yeah, I don't know. I mean, I guess when I was younger, it used to be a thing where it was like, how I look, hey, look, my little guy, Slim Shady, you know, <laughs> shit like that from like old heads in the neighborhood and stuff. But I, um, you know, I don't know, bro. That shit never really got to me. The, I guess, I guess a negative would be it is easier for people in their minds because, you know, we only know what we know and our perspectives are only going to be created by our experiences and, and, and how we see shit, you know? So yeah. if somebody's like, you know, maybe they're not thinking on a level or just not choosing to think as deeply on something, they might say, oh, well, this is, is this what it is, and face value, you're white, so other oh, white person. It just makes sense. Like, I'm not going to act like it doesn't simply make sense, but I mean, you know... Yeah, man. I, I think for me, I'm more focused on being who I am than being a white rapper. Yeah. Because who I am is the only one. You know what I mean? Ain't nobody like me for real at all. Mm -hmm. You know, any ethnicity, any whatever. I'm just a person, you know? Facts. So E-commerce out right now, bro. Yeah, e-commerce is out, man. That shit has been going crazy. A lot of people hit me up after we did the, the video, man. You guys tapped me into a whole new scene of nah, people, bro. Sure. That shit was fire. I appreciate that. So how did you come up with that song, bro? Um, Shit, man. I was... uh, 
we had just launched the River City Demos 350K Celebration hoodies. It was a limited merch drop. And e-commerce, we sold out of them bitches like really fast. And I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> this is crazy. Because I, I up till that point, I hadn't really had a merch drop be that successful. Um, By the way, there's going to be some merch at this show. July 21st at RVA Boombox, 8 p.m. Be there, be square. We in a back alley on 6 West Carey Street. You funky bitch. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I, uh, we, we did the merch drop and I was working a job I hated at the time. And I was like, this job fucking sucks. I'm going to sell merch. I don't want no nine to five, bitch. I do e-commerce. And it just inspired me to just hustle harder and, and, and you know, take take control of my my situation to a further extent than I was already. You know what I mean? Bro, you did about eight promo videos to that song. What I think made we you did wanna, more, to be what honest. What made you want to do so many promo videos to that song? Um, like, Shit, man. Trying to just... Because, you know, sometimes as artists, we have some shit in the tuck for a while. And when we put it out, we're already tired of it. So just trying to understand, like, if you make quality work and it's new to everybody who's never heard it before, keep pushing it. You know, um, we are coming out with a new record called Benz, which we're going to rec- uh, perform July 21st at RBA <laughs> Boombox, <laughs> sure. 8 p.m. Um And, and that's, a, that's another bop type joint. But I'm really excited for, for the new music. Um, coming out, you know, um, I feel like the the industry or the state of music or culture in general is kind of at a point now where we're all exhausted, you know, mm. I think that we've been kind of being fed a lot of the same stuff, you know, a lot of the same frequency, and I'm not here to say that, you know, I'm not finna say to Bow Wow, all oh, this shit is trash, <laughs> you know, <laughs> but, but at the same time, it does seem like we in hip hop are not respecting the the capabilities of our art form. Like when you think about what makes a classic, you got to think about the the time put into the project or the record of the song, the the layers, the attention to detail. And it just seems like to me we're at a point now where for a while we haven't had that attention to detail and respect for the power of our of our art form. And now I feel like we're getting to a spot where people are ready for for that that big attention to detail. Things like what we're about to do with this show, you know, Mm -hmm. things like what this next project is going to be like, you know what I mean? And and, and I'm really excited for that. I think art is coming back in a real way, you know. Sure. Tell me three things that you can't live without. Um, Things? Just like things? Or can people be part of it? Things. Just things? Um, I can't live without. Uh, I'll put. I already know, nigga. One of them is phone. Yeah, phone. My <laughs> glasses. Um, don't people sleep on the glasses? I'm hella blind out here. I I would not have survived if we were doing like fucking chasing deer and hyena and shit as as primitive humans. I would they would have got me out of here. I'd be fooled. <laughs> Couldn't see what's going on. But um, yeah. <laughs> So phone, glasses, and then probably like my recording setup, you know, if I can glob that into one. What was your biggest accomplishment last year? Mm. 2022. 2022, my biggest accomplishment was my baby girl's first birthday. You know, yeah. that was the biggest thing for sure. Bigger than all of this music shit, bigger than anything. My baby was one year old. A we, whole year, Yeah, man. man. Almost two now, man. Shit's crazy. Just made me want to go harder every day, cause yeah. trying to make we we turned up for this last birthday. We we had a whole <laughs> event space, you know, the whole tang and biscuit was evangel yeah. blah blah blahs. My babies, I say it in songs. Evie, it was Evie shit, and we put out all the fucking sesame. Shit. It was it was fire. So we gotta keep going hard, like when we do this show July twenty first <laughs> at all the eight boom box, and next birthday gonna be way 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 iller. What's your biggest goal for this year, man? Biggest goal for this year is to connect with the people, to connect with the base, to connect with humans in a real way, to double down on the art as opposed to doubling down on what they tell me to double down on. You know what I mean? Because I'm trying to make this shit that's going to stick with folks forever. 
motherfuckers be hitting me up about songs I made when I was 17. I'm 21 now. So <laughs> if I can continue to do that and elevate what that is, then I'll be I'll be I'll be good, man. Because I, you know, I love the bops. But you know, maybe it's time for me to say more than about how much I'm getting my dick sucked. <laughs> you know what? I, you know what I mean? Which we definitely do. We definitely do, but just in all seriousness, just doubling down on the art and and really connecting with the people cuz I don't think this the way the game is and has been for the past year or two is going to stay like this for much longer. In your opinion, is having a ghostwriter a bad thing in your opinion? Um, I've written for people. I've written for other rappers. Um, but for me, as an MC, mm-hmm. can't nobody be writing your shit but you. Now, that's a different conversation than like if you're an artist and you want to make the best song, mm-hmm. you know, yeah, go ghost write it up. Because, you know, I mean, fucking feel it in the air tonight. Phil Collins has like 20 different writers, bro. You know what I mean? So, and that's a legendary record. So if, if we're talking about that, do your thing. But I promise you, uh, put it this way. Pete Rock helped Nas with the hook on this shit. Mm -hmm. He had nothing to do with those verses. And that's how it goes. You know what I mean? If if you're a rapper, if you're an MC, if you want to be top five dead or alive, you write every verse. (laughs) Nobody touches (laughs) it. You know what I mean? So, yeah, basically just that. Hey, you got any shout outs, bro? Yeah, man. Shout out RVA motherfucking boombox, man. (laughs) July 21st. You know, you know, be there, be square. You know what I'm saying? We're going to be shining due to incredible, impeccable, and excellent skincare. All right? 8 p.m. Doors open. Shout out my dog, Rep. Shout out motherfucking RVA artists. You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, we yeah. in here, you know? Uh, shout out PGB Renegade. Shout out uh, fucking Stick. Shout out all my friends. I shouldn't have started this because now I got to say everybody I feel like. But I'm not. <laughs> I'm not. I love you guys. Yeah, yeah. Where can they follow you, bro? Sneeze804. If you don't know me, get familiar. You know what I'm saying? I'm, you know, what you see is what you get. Same motherfucker you hear in the songs is the same person you see in person. And, uh, you know, it's love, man. Come pull up on me. July 21st at RVA Boombox. You know what I'm saying? Let's dap up. Let's do some music. Let's smoke some fucking weed. And, uh, you know, yeah, man. What advice would you give to an up and coming artist that want to take this shit serious, man? Um,. You either do it or you don't do it, you know, because I meet so many people that are like, hey, bruh, you know, I really want to rap. I really want to do this. But I think the only way anything's ever going to work for you is if you separate yourself from the really wanting to and just do the shit. You know what I mean? Because like if I was, if you're, if you're a basketball player, right? Are you going to sit around and be like, man, I just got to get the, I got to get the the right socks and I need the J's and I I need the compression arm. (laughs) Bro, you haven't been to practice yet. (laughs) Learn the jump shot. You know what I mean? So you just got to do the shit and and nobody's going to hold you accountable more than yourself. You know? For sure. What's more important, bro? The song or the visual? Um, I think the song at the core is always going to be the most important because the video around it, any visual aspect of the music is just an enhancer. It's just a means of bringing it to life. Now, with that being said, a great visual can make a shitty song passable (laughs) and a weird visual that makes people uncomfortable can make it to where folks don't want to listen to your song based on the video. You know what I mean? So I think they go hand in hand, but I think it would be weird if we just saw a bunch of music video scenes with no music, you know? <laughs> but uh, yeah, like 60 40 type shit. I'm gonna give you 30 seconds to spit some bars, bro. I'm oh, just man. Signing out, man. Shit, I'll, I'll say this. If you wanna hear way more than 30 seconds of bars, <laughs> pull up July 21st, RVA Boombox, Box, where we're gonna be me. barring out, doing incredible records, setting incredible records and all. But for real, man, like, if you ever fuck with Sneeze, if you ever, you know what I'm saying, have been a part of this in any way, it's 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 my goal to where we can all bask in the community that we've created at this show. That is our show, brought to you by RVA Boombox, at RVA Boombox, you know what I'm saying, with my man Sean King and A-Plez. And, and it's, it's going to be a historical moment, man. I feel it in my gut. And I'm going to be honest with you, 
throughout my whole life and, and especially career, mm-hmm. every time I feel this way, shit goes incredible, bro. And that's just how it's going to be, man. What's the good thing about doing shows, man? Doing shows is so important. I hate it when these motherfuckers be like, oh, but I don't want to do shows. I don't want, I just want to be a student. Shut the fuck up, man. Be an artist, yo. Get <laughs> on stage. Perform and interact with humans. That I mean, if you want to make music just for your room, stay in your room and listen to the music. We're doing this for the people. It's about how much you can give, so you can't be so selfish that you're not going to give back to the people. And that anxiety about performing is just being a narcissist because it's like, bro, the situation is already set up to where they're going to listen to what you're saying. So if you're even doubling down on like, well, what do they think of me? Stop thinking about yourself. Think about them. <laughs> think about giving them the best show and then just being yourself and shit will happen, bro. Yeah, I love performing, man. It's awesome. It's one of my favorite things. What's next for Sneeze, man? Uh, well, I think we had an idea of what's next for <laughs> Sneeze. Uh, but uh, yeah, uh, July 21st, RVA Boombox, man. That's what's next for Sneeze. Um, subsequently, man, we just going to put out Benz. Actually, Benz comes out this week. Um, Who produced it? Ant the symbol. Ant the motherfucking symbol. The right. goat. Man, don't sleep on Ant the symbol, man. That guy is a madman. Um, yeah. So Ben's with Ant the symbol. This show at RVA Boombox, July twenty first at eight p.m. Six West Carey Street. And then uh, I I'll say it here. I'll give you all the news here. We're working on a project. Ooh. We're working on a project. There was a. Uh, situation, it w- you know what I'm saying? I, we don't even got to get into that. Sometimes you pull up and you see that detour sign and it takes you on the best route of your life. So that's where we headed with it. RVA artists, sneeze, RVA boombox. One more time. When is the show, bro? July 21st. July 21st. 8 p.m. 6 West Cary Street. Off the back alley. You're going to walk around in the alley and you're going to say... Why does it say on the alley? Because you don't know the kind of incredibly cool, awesome graffiti art that motherfuckers have set up back here just to in, 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 encapsulate you in the vibe. And we want to share that with you guys, man. We want to we wanna give you this energy. So, yeah, July 21st. I've said it a million times. July 21st. You're like, And get your tickets, too. You'll save a few dollars if you get them in my bio. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Pre-sale a little cheaper. Boomboxlinks.com too. If you're not on Instagram right now watching this, boomboxlinks.com. Get your, Get your motherfucking tickets now, baby. You know? <laughs> yeah. Where can they follow you? One more time, bro. Sneeze804. You know what I'm saying? I'm Sneeze. I'm from the 804, and uh, that's where we at everywhere. With. And we're RBA artists, and we signing out. Peace.